Whitney, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh my goodness. I'm so glad to have you here. I've been looking forward to this conversation. Just, you know, one mom to another and one business owner to another is just, I think there's so many things that, um, you know, I, I want to say normal people don't may not understand that, you know, when you're when you have a child and you're trying to start a business, it's just it's a lot. You go through a lot of transformation all at once. So I'm excited to dive in um, and to hear more of your story. But to start, I know that there was um, a pivotal moment in your journey, even before you had your child, that really shaped the trajectory of your journey. So would you take us into that moment in your timeline? Sure. Yeah. So we were connected through a mutual friend, Kim Knievel, who I worked with in my first PR job. And I was there at this big global agency for about five years. And that's longer than a lot of people stay at these agencies just because it's such hard work for so little pay at first, quite honestly. And we were were both really hard workers and um, we were in our early 20s, both working on behalf of Microsoft. And I was at work when I got the phone call that my dad was diagnosed with brain cancer and that he had to be driven over the mountains like that day to come to the hospital. I'm in Seattle. So he was... across the state. And thankfully, they came to where I was for him to have emergency brain surgery. And that's kind of when everything shifted for me, where I had this whole series in Seattle, just like in the Bay Area, there's a lot of sexy companies to work for. And I probably any name that you can think of that you would associate with Seattle, I worked on behalf of them. That was the moment where everything clued into me. My dad was a parks director. So he, his whole life was designed around play, his whole career. And then here I was just very externally validated, very into getting that next A and not really sure how to get it in the, in the real world, quote unquote, in these, these jobs where I was working 80 hours a week and getting feedback on comma placement and things like that, which is important. Um, I think I had it right. I mean, I have an English degree in that moment and how my, my team at work and HR and everything handled the next year of my life was really eye opening for me as to what I wanted in my life and my business. And I always kind of went back to my dad of in his job. He was the director of parks for the city of Richland in Washington state. He had a cute little house down the street from his office. He rode his bike to work. He came home for lunch, made himself a bratwurst, rode his bike back home. And I always thought that was cute and idyllic. And I thought that would be cool for me too, but I didn't necessarily believe it could be for me. So after that moment, he he died two years later after a really tough battle with brain cancer. And in that time, I was 24 when he got diagnosed. And I really got to see where I wanted my life to take me. And it wasn't until five years later when I was pregnant with our first child and still going, working for all these sexy companies, doing PR and social media, that finally an opportunity was presented to me to just quit my corporate career and start that life. So I always say that my dad's situation, my dad's cancer started the journey for me, like put the intention in my brain in a very real way. And then my son kicked me in the uterus to make it happen. (laughs) Client that started my business is Sir Latab, which is a really cool cookware company that's based in Seattle. And if they hadn't invited me to their office, like 37 weeks pregnant and fully aware of my big belly and asking me like, when can you start? Where can you sign? What's your LLC? I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have had a business plan. I wouldn't have like taken the steps to really thoughtfully quit my job. That's just not how my brain works, but that's a lot of how society told me I needed to be. So I would have been stunted in creating a business had it not been presented to me in the way that it was. And I do believe that that process of me being pregnant, having this corporate job that I was commuting an hour each way to and visiting daycares on my lunch break and hearing that they had more time off than I did, it just wasn't making any sense. And then the stars kind of all aligned, starting with that that intention 
when he was diagnosed to just be like, I don't want to have my life be so hard in this way and be unfulfilling. I want to be with my kids. I want to show them a life that like my dad showed me of riding his bike to work and back and having that flexibility and that beauty, which you can do working for someone else. For me, it had to be not working for somebody else, but it can look all sorts of different ways. And so those two things were really kind of in parallel on the same path to getting me where I am today. And now I have a communications consultancy, a small boutique copywriting agency in the Seattle area. And then I also started an independent press for West Coast writers and artists. I didn't think of myself as super money driven at first. I knew like in the marketplace what I thought my value was. I still thought it was too low. And so I would always advocate for raises and for more money up front. But my goal for my business, when I, I had two goals when I started my business. One was to be able to spend some time with my son and kill the commute. Like those things go hand in hand. And the second one was to make half my salary because that's what I would have been giving to the daycare and or the nanny who got more time off than I did. And that felt very reasonable to me. It felt like a goal that I could achieve and something that like I could pin the feather in my cap of like, no, no problem. And I think because I made myself some achievable goals they were easy to blow out of the water because that first year of my business, I made more money than I had ever made in a corporate career. And that really showed me wow. that this is possible for me. I actually just did the math on it. I made 133% of my salary my first full year in business. Wow. And just me running my business and with those yeah. conversations and those like cornerstone clients who really loaded yeah. me. And business. a newborn. Yeah. And thankfully, he was very easy. I mean, I would be on calls and he would be nursing. He would nurse and sleep for hours. And we all know that oh, like- what a dream. Yeah, newborns, they are difficult in their own ways. But like, if you have a busy brain, they're very understimulating. So I knew that mm -hmm. like, I couldn't just like have a maternity leave where you go from 100 to zero. I mean, I still watched all of Friday Night Lights all the way through. But I still also needed to use my brain and- um, my husband went back to work a couple of days after my son was born because he was new in his job. So we were very isolated. And if I hadn't had my business, I wouldn't have survived that because I needed my brain to be working on some other problems other than like my body's not mine anymore. What are my boobs doing? The next poop, mm -hmm. the next feeding, <laughs> all of that. It just is a little too rote for me. And I do believe I've built to be a mother, but I also need to use my brain and contribute to my family in ways that are financially successful. Um, so that first year of being in business, it, like really gave me motivation to know you're on to something. This is good for you. And then during COVID, my my income was slashed because all of my clients, which are more consumer lifestyle driven, were tightening up budgets. And so then I had to figure out new ways of bringing in income and how I defined abundance. And that's kind of where my journey to like redefining abundance and selling things out of the garage literally so that I could not take on another job because I knew that wouldn't be good for me like in any sense. Um, I had to redefine my relationship there. And that's when I started my money work too, because after that, when my income came back, it kind of plateaued at that same level. And I had to figure out and think about what is, how am I defining my worth and how am I making money? What are my streams of income? How am I managing my money after I get it? And ensuring that I'm articulating my value to clients, like all sorts of different levels of that. And knowing that I can always, like you said, always increase, always work harder to make more and, and give back and create the cycle of abundance and not hoard and just so many things. So then I spent like probably the past three years, I've been really studying money and my relationship to money, um, which kind of ladders on top of that, you know, soul work, internalization, and then I had to add the money part on top of it once I was ready and and not force that learning either. That's been a whole part of it too, because I would think, okay, I had a $10,000 a month. Now 
let me have a $20,000 a month. It doesn't really work that mm-hmm. way. You have to like kind of energetically calibrate to that on top of like the mm-hmm. reality of the clients. But right. I, I wasn't there yet as far as like, you can't just decide. I've made a lot of decisions that have come to fruition, but it doesn't just change that quickly unless you have mechanisms <laughs> in place. Yeah. The energetics ready to receive that amount of money and know what to do with it. The the final piece I wanted to ask you was not only how can people get in touch with you, but we didn't really get into, we talked about a little bit of your writing, but I know you do even more than that. So share with us a little bit about what you do at your, your company, Popa and Associates, and um, how you can help people and then tell them where they can go, not only to get in touch with you there, but also get a copy of the um, your booklet. Sure. Thank you for asking. My copywriting agency, Pope and Associates, is popeandassociates.com. We focus on West Coast and Pacific Northwest lifestyle businesses and writing for them. The thing that we and my life mission, which goes into these two companies, but the thing that we do at Pope and Associates for businesses is help them tell their story. And then we put it in these places where it matters. So we rewrite websites, we write websites from scratch, then we take the, that content and ongoing content, make it into blogs, newsletters, we write social media captions. So all that high touch point writing for people and the ones who come to us the most are very like heart centered, consumer driven businesses, hospitality, food, um, lifestyle. And I've had all sorts of things from baby deals companies where they they share daily deals for kids items to resorts in the San Juan Islands and everything in between. And we first start with identifying your voice and then building stories around that that really resonate with people so that they want to know, like, and trust you and purchase from you, whether that's come and stay at your facilities or buy your products. And it's really a matchmaking process too, where like, if you're not the right match for us or vice versa, then we want to make sure that we're really the right people for each other. And I've expanded my agency into from being just me to now four writers who really understand how to tell stories well. And we're very driven in that way. So if anybody listening has stories that they want to tell and they feel like, I just don't know how to help people understand what I do and how I do it in my voice. If writing is just not your forte, then come to us at pobenassociates.com and we will help you. And then the other arm of my business, the independent press is for me to not only tell my stories in a more creative way, but for, to provide a platform for others to do the same. And that is where you can find the booklet. And it is, the company is R West Press, O-W-O-U-R, rwestpress.com slash books is where you can find the book. All of that is in all of my links on everywhere. And I'm just at Whit Popa everywhere, every social platform, because I am a recovering social media manager, um, which is why I don't do social media <laughs> management. I do, we write captions. So we just keep it into that. We keep it in the storytelling fold, but I still keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on in social media and how we can get your story out, whether that's through influencers and PR, like very localized PR and um, mostly that story driven content on your website through the landing pages and blogs. Amazing. Well, Whitney Popa, mom, writer, entrepreneur and founder uh, and business owner at Popa and Associates. Whitney, thank you so much for being here with us and our listener today. 